What is up, bros and broettes? It's Ink Slasher44, and today we're going to be talking about the Will of Crota strike mission. Uh, this time we're actually not doing a let's play. We are doing, um, we're playing through it on the Nightfall difficulty, and I'm actually just going to do a walkthrough instead of playing through the whole thing. And basically, the way I'm going to do this is there are four different sections in this strike that are very, very difficult. I'm going to walk you through every single one of them and tell you the best overall strategy to beat this strike on the Nightfall. The reason why I'm doing this is a lot of my friends have said that this Nightfall mission is very very hard and I beat it on my second try so I'm gonna tell you exactly the strategy we used and how we did it so first of all I the three people I played with the the first two were warlocks myself and one of the other guys I was playing with is also a warlock we were both using the self resurrect ability and we were playing with a titan who is using the striker titan uh, reason being he had his like, earth shock ability where he slams down and then it makes the ground shock and the reason why that's so important is every once in a while you get attacked by thralls upon thralls upon thralls and that earth shock ability is so so strong against them because like we're going to talk about in a minute, that skull is on. So, the skulls that are on, there is Juggler, there is Nightfall, there is uh, Light Switch, which makes it so every time you get meleeed, you instantly die, no matter how much shield you have. And uh, finally, like I was saying, the Earth Shock is on. So you're going to want to use as many shock weapons as possible. As you can see right now, I'm using the uh, Murmur's Fusion Rifle, which does not only shock damage, but also does solar damage, and you can switch between the two. So... What weapons are you going to want to use? Like I said, use any shock damage. The reason why I'm using solar damage next is because those are the best weapons I have and you do face witches which have uh, solar shields instead of shock shields like um, the captains do and like the knights do. They both have shock shields. So that's very, very important to note what type of shields you're dealing with. As far as how you're going to want to play this, you're going to want to play very, very, very passively. Um, in this first section here, this is the first of four sections. In this first section, you're going to want to stay in this little cubicle room that you see us staying in right now. Um, the reason why this is so important is because it provides cover and not all the enemies will come even close to this cubed area. Um, when you are in this cubed area, a few things are going to happen. So first of all, what we are doing right now is we are killing the main things. After we kill the main things, shanks are going to spawn in. The reason why these shanks are so hard to kill is because they all have solar shields, every single one of them. After you've killed all the shanks, then stealth vandals are going to spawn in. Those are also very hard to kill because most of them are yellow stealth vandals. Once you've killed all the stealth vandals, more main things are going to spawn in the room. And then again, shanks are going to spawn, stealth vandals are going to spawn again. Once you've killed those stealth vandals, the gate that you see right across from me there, it's just basically a bunch of different lasers facing different directions, will unlock and then you can go through. But like I said, play very passively and always have one person at the back of the pack who is literally solely there to revive your team. We will talk about this later, but that person who is there to solely revive your team should also also be using the self resurrect ability if you have someone using that ability so generally it speaking it was either me or the other warlock we were playing with who was staying at the back of the pack as you can see right there he uses earth shock ability to take out all the stealth vandals very 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 good way of dealing with the stealth vandals and also a very very good way of dealing with thralls so moving on to the next section this section we will call the array section and the reason why this one is the array section is because that's the mission where you first play in this area. So what is there to note about this area? So this area is probably the easiest out of the four areas. As you can see though, right there, all three of us die, but that is when you use the self-resurrect ability. So, so, so key. So the notable things about this area are, first of all, you're going to be fighting a lot of shanks and a lot of vandals. Um, not that hard to kill, but you guys gotta kind of stay back, once again, playing passively, and another thing you're gonna have to look at is for, out for is snipers. So what happens here is that those snipers back there, they spawn on those uh, pillars almost. They're actually crates, but I'm gonna call them pillars. Also, there is a guy right on top there where I was just looking, there is a sniper up there. If you go too far out, he will snipe you and he kills you very, very easily. So before you move out, make sure you take him out we couldn't see him there but we take him out later on top of that when you what's gonna happen is you're gonna defeat wave upon wave of these enemies and then at the end a named yellow will spawn in once that named yellow spawns in that's when you know you can officially move forward and nothing else will spawn in once you've take took out the named yellow I, th I believe he's a captain, but once you've taken out the named yellow, you are free to move on to the next section. 
So like I said, tips for this section, make sure you take out that sniper that's up on that ledge, look out for snipers, and play very, very passively. The third section is where you first see Omnigal, and this section isn't too hard, but you do have to play it very passively once again. Uh, tips and tricks for this one is, first of all, don't worry about fighting Omnigal. You are not going to do anything whatsoever to Omnigal until the next section. So as you can see, Omnigal's right there. You shoot him a, her a couple times, and then things start spawning in. She actually spawns them in. So keys to this area, you gotta watch out for the Ascendant Knights or Hallowed Knights. The guys with the swords, they will fuck your day up. You want to stay away from them at all costs. Also... Um, if you're using the Warlock Self-Resurrect ability, wait to use it until everyone is dead. That way, you know you're using it to revive people. Third tip I can give you is if you are the Titan, use that Earthshock ability on the Thralls in this area. The Thralls are going to be what causes you the most uh, problems that get up close to you. Also, you can always decide to use it on the Sword Knights if need be. Um, this area that we're in right now is very good for taking out the first few minions that he spawns against you. Once you've taken out an ogre that he spawns in, that he'll spawn in this ogre. Once you've taken out that ogre, you are free to move up a little bit further. Once you have taken out the ogre, this is going to be the kind of area you're going to want to stay in. These minions can do a lot of damage to you. As you can see, that knight almost killed me there in one shot. So you're going to want to watch out for that knight who's up on that platform up there. You can see me looking for him here. There he is up there. You can just see the edge of him. Um, but yeah, you're going to want to stay back in this area and slowly eliminate the enemies that are at the top of this hill. They have the vantage point on you, so you have to play this very, very slow. And like I told you before, make sure you have that back man there, always ready to revive people. And the final section is fighting Omnigal. So there is a lot to talk about in this area. So the way you're going to want to beat Omnigal is by being fighting him very, very slowly. You're going to want to stay in this area that we're in right now. You're going to want one person to stay up on that ledge just for ad control. And then you're going to want to watch out for this doorway. In that doorway, Hallowed Thralls spawn with no warning whatsoever. Aside from those two things, it's a very basic strategy. You fight the adds. Once the adds are killed, you go in and attack Omnigal. Once you're attacking Omnigal, you know adds will spawn in when Omnigal lets out this really, really loud shriek. You can't miss it. You'll know, as soon as she lets out that shriek, adds are going to start to spawn in. Things you're going to want to watch out for is right before Omnigal dies, as you just saw, a hallowed witch actually spawns in, and it will come right up to you, right up in your face, and try to kill you, just like it did for us. Aside from that, you're going to want to wait to use your super abilities until everyone's dead if you're using the self-resurrect ability. And if you're using the earth shock ability like I suggested, you're going to want to save that to kill the thralls or the ascendant knight that runs at you. Once you have killed the adds, like I said, you're going to want to make that slow push up, staying in this area. Make sure you stay in this area. If you look to my right right now, behind me, up on a ledge, there's actually knights that spawn in up there. So the further I move forward, the easier it is for those knights to shoot me, and you're going to want to watch out for that. Using grenades that cause stun damage to the boss are a great idea. That way they can't shoot you, and you can shoot her. And, like I said, just play it really slow, slowly work up to the edge, make sure she can't shoot you, but you can shoot her, as you can see by right there, she just got stunned, and then we can start shooting her. Uh, it's actually not that hard of a strike if you play it passively, it took us about 45 minutes to complete in total, just by going very, very slowly, slowly pushing up, and this method, where we are right now, this area, if you control the adds and then work up and attack Omnigal, you can't lose. The only thing you need to look out for is those hallowed um, thralls that will spawn in behind you out of that door that I showed you. But that is why we kept one guy up above on that ledge because the hallowed thralls had a really, really tough time of killing that person up there. Um, so that was our general strategy. And as you can see uh, right there, we just actually beat Omnigal right there. And uh, that was pretty much that. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you found it informative whatsoever or it helped you out beat the Nightfall, go ahead and leave a like rating. It will be very, very greatly appreciated. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, peace out.